Richard Dawkins has been in a lot of hot water lately over some tweets that were widely perceived as being transphobic. For more on that, I recommend this article by Tucker Lieberman. So today I wanted to take a look at this article that Dawkins recently published titled Race is a Spectrum, Sex is Pretty Damn Binary. In this article, Dawkins attempts to explain himself by saying that he ended his most controversial tweet with the word discuss, meaning that he was only trying to have an honest conversation about this topic, not take a hard stance on it. While this is a fine point to make, and I do believe that that's what he was doing, somebody with a platform this big should be a lot more careful to make sure that their intentions are very, very clear when they're posting things like this. Dawkins has made a career out of engaging with the public and promoting an understanding of science. He should know better than most people that the way in which you present an idea is oftentimes more important than what you're actually saying. He then goes on to validate the gender identity of Dr. Jan Morris, but then he immediately turns around and starts to use her as a benchmark with which to judge whether or not other trans people should be taken seriously by asking whether they've put in the work that Dr. Morris has in her transition. And by doing so, he seems to take this stance that some trans women have like earned their womanhood more than other trans women have, and that's deeply problematic for a lot of reasons. Even more troubling is the fact that he then goes on to do one of the exact things that he got in so much trouble for in the first place by comparing changing your gender to changing your race. And while he does do a pretty good job of explaining why the latter is a problem, by comparing and often conflating these two issues, and by downplaying the reality of race being a social construct by calling it a fashionable doctrine, Dawkins is unwittingly feeding into a number of bigoted talking points that have been used to deny trans people their identities and to discredit racial justice movements for decades. Overall, he does seem to accept the identities of trans people, and I appreciate the fact that he's trying to show just how tricky and difficult to define these issues can be from a scientific perspective, but by wrapping all of that up in these convoluted and often outdated ideas, he comes across more like one of those people that try to police accessible parking spaces by asking everybody to prove that they're disabled enough to park there. It's just kind of gross. I give this article a science teacher challenge level 8 out of 10. These are some pretty advanced topics that are being presented by a well-established public intellectual. And while the bioanthropological research that shows why Dr. Dawkins is wrong about things like sex is almost 30 years old now, it's still unfortunately an area of public controversy, so it's unreasonable to expect that everybody knows all the details. Also, I did add an extra point for that just for emotional reasons. Richard Dawkins has been a hero of mine for a very long time, and it hurts to see him being so loudly incorrect about something that hurts so many people. Look, the fact is we can't expect any science scientists to know everything there is to know about their field, so it's totally understandable that he would make a mistake about something like this. But when it comes to a topic that is this socially salient and that he's getting this much pushback on, I really wish he had shown the humility to go back and fact check himself, rather than trying to build a bridge between two very unequal camps like he did with this article. Thanks so much for watching, have an awesome rest of your day, and never stop learning. Baby.